Okay, so today William and I are taking a spin in a GLC 300. And what's interesting about a GLC 300 is that it is currently Mercedes-Benz number one selling model here in the US. Uh, it has been very successful for them so far and it's only been out for a short time. Uh, they've been a little bit hit and miss in the SUV uh, crossover market recently, uh, but this has been a huge success for them for good reason. Uh, it's very similar to the C-Class, it's similar in size to the C-Class, that's why there's the C in the name. Uh, and Mercedes are trying to fix their model numbers so that they make a little more sense. I tell you, <laughs> uh, the marketing people at Mercedes must be hitting their crack pipes pretty hard recently because there are so many different model types or class types uh, within the Mercedes range now. Uh, 27 at last count. Um, there's 27 class types and then the models underneath them. So uh, it's, I think even if you work at Mercedes, you get confused as to what model is which. And even this car, its predecessor was called something different. It was called the GLK uh, from 2015 and earlier. It was sort of that boxier shape. Never sold that well. Wasn't quite up to the same standard as Mercedes other cars. And this GLC fixes those problems. It has the beautiful interior you see throughout the Mercedes range now. They've really upped their standards. Uh, and of course they've fixed the name. So a GLC. LC is the same size as a C-Class sedan and a GLE for example is the more the mid-size and the GLS is the full size. Uh, that's not to say there's still not confusion within the range but yeah it's they're starting to standardize the names a little bit more so that we can understand when you look at the the, the plate um, what, what size vehicle you're getting and then the 300 at the end obviously represents the engine and long ago, just like with BMW, long ago that used to represent uh, the engine size, but these days it, it has no relevance. So the 300, in this case, is the 2 litre turbocharged engine, which is the, the lowest engine. And uh, in, to go up to the next size engine, the 3 litre turbocharged, you go to the AMG model, which is just adding confusion as well. Now Mercedes are throwing AMG onto anything that has slightly more power than the previous model. So yeah, the one up from this is the AMG 43, uh, uh, GLC 43, um, which is the three liter turbo. But yeah, so this is the base model and it comes in two forms, the rear wheel drive or the four wheel drive. Today we're driving the four wheel drive uh, and they're pretty reasonably priced. You know, they started about 40,000 and uh, if you fully option them, they can be over 60,000. And the car we're driving today is sort of a mid, mid range, just over 50,000, so all the, the good options. But even the base model has some great features like anti-collision and, and most of the, the luxury items that you want. So there's a lot to like about this new GLC range. Firstly, I like its looks. You know, it's not too overstated. It blends in, you know, it's not too showy, but it's still a handsome car. For once, Mercedes is offering a good range of colors. Previously, it's all been greys and whites and blacks with one or two colours thrown in. The 12 colours that are available at the moment are all, you know, reds, a couple of browns, lots of blues, you know, a good colour range on the outside. So I think the outside is, is a big, big improvement over the previous GLK. The next thing I like about this GLC is the ride and handling. You know, obviously it's going to be geared a little bit more to the comfort than sporty, but the handling is still pretty good for an SUV, you know, you've got high center of gravity and that's why I've never really loved SUVs is because I don't like that high center of gravity, but this handles well, you know. I take a corner at a fair speed and there's very little body roll, but more than that, you know, it soaks up the bumps and there's very little noise in the cabin, you know. Oh, bit of roadkill here. Jeez, what is that? Um, <laughs> yeah, there's very little road noise. You know, it is a very comfortable place to be. Uh, it's just the smoothness that we've come to expect from Mercedes-Benz. As for performance, well, you know, this is a four-cylinder, two-liter engine. Very popular in this size car these days. Uh, very economical. Uh, it's not McLaren fast, obviously. Uh, Nought to 60, between five and six seconds. Uh, it's enough, you know, it's enough. It's surprising how quickly it does move this car along. This uh, GLC is actually a little lighter than the outgoing GLK it replaces. So if I put my foot down, watch out for this Corolla. Yeah, it picks up, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's enough 
If you want more performance, obviously you have to spend the extra 10 grand or so and get the three liter turbocharged engine. These two liter turbocharged engines are now very popular because they are enough power to motivate these smaller SUVs. But, you know, the engine noise is nothing to write home about. <laughs> what are you gonna do with a four cylinder engine? So Mercedes considers this a small SUV. Uh, some people would consider it a mid-size crossover. I don't know what you want to call it, but basically it is competing with the likes of the uh, X3 from BMW or the Q5 from Audi or even the Macan uh, from Porsche. Yes, the Macan even has a four-cylinder turbocharged engine just like this now. Um, well, the Macan starts at about $8,000 more. It is a direct competitor to this vehicle. Um, and all of those models I like. Um, I think the refinement of the Mercedes inside is nicer than the BMW. Uh, I certainly prefer some of the um, uh, ride quality and uh, ergonomics of the Audi more. And I really love the handling and performance of the uh, Porsche Macan more than, than the rest. But yeah, this is a very strong competitor within this market. I think this is probably the quietest one. And this certainly has one of the nicest interiors. So actually some of the uh, options, strangely enough from Mercedes, are reasonably priced. Uh, you know, an example of that is like the Burmeister stereo upgrade, which is a fantastic option, $850, well worthwhile. That same upgrade in a Porsche is thousands of dollars. Um, but that's not to say that all the options are a bargain. As I said before, uh, to fully option this car, you're gonna be well over the 60,000 range, so you have gotta be careful with the options. Uh, one of the more expensive options is the Napa leather. The Napa leather is very nice, and it's $4,000, but to get the Napa leather, you've also got to get $3,000 of other options before they let you configure the Napa leather, so that's $7,000. So let's have a look at the gearbox as well. Uh, this has got the nine speed automatic in it. Uh, and a lot of nine speed transmissions, you never see the use of the ninth gear. But this will actually allow you to go into ninth gear, I'll demonstrate. We're doing 70 miles an hour, I'll put it in the uh, manual mode, going up the gears, eighth gear, ninth gear. So here we are at 75 miles an hour in ninth gear, and we're idling along at one and a half thousand RPM. That is a very, very tall ninth gear. Uh, interestingly, it it will always override you though. You know, if I put my, if I've got it in manual mode and I put my foot to the kick down, it overrides me and drops straight to fourth gear. And just like most modern gearboxes, it's pretty fast on the change. And you know, for, you know, a four cylinder turbocharged engine, it's got reasonable pickup. Yeah, it's a nice gearbox. Uh, my only complaint about the gears is not with the gears themselves, but with the silly gear lever that, uh, that Mercedes still insist on using, which is like a stalk off the steering wheel here. I'd like to see that disappear. There's no benefit to that. Uh, it just means that they crowd the other stalks with more things. So this stalk is normally what, the, the washers and wipers on most cars, and it's the gears and Mercedes Benz, instead of having a, a, a lever or a knob down in the center console here. Um, yeah, it just takes a little bit of getting used to. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, and it makes the other stalk, the, uh, the cruise control stalk, disappear between, behind the wheel here, uh, when that could be up here or, or in a place where you could actually see it. So, not my favorite feature, but yeah, the gearbox is super nice, and it does actually use nine gears. Okay, so we'll have a quick look around the outside, and as I said before, I like the look of the outside. You know, it's, it's a little more rounded off, uh, not as edgy as the GLK that it replaces, fits in, you know, it's a, it's a handsome car from the outside. This one's got the 19 inch wheels, um, they come standard with the 18s, you can option up the 19 or even up to the 20. I'd stay, stay away from the 20s, the, the, the harsh ride of the 20s makes them not worthwhile, whereas the 19s are a good compromise between the two of them. Um, and you know, it, it's, it looks bigger from the outside than it really is. Um, I think it looks bigger than the, than the, than the Q5. It certainly looks bigger than the McCann. Feels bigger on the inside as well. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty handsome looking vehicle. I'd be happy to see, be seen in one of these. Okay, before we jump inside, we'll have a look in the trunk or the boot. And it's pretty long, seems longer than the uh, Q5 or the Macan. 
and uh, they haven't put any spare wheels in this model I believe so if we just sneak a look in here yeah there's little hidey holes under here for extra bits and pieces so reasonable amount of luggage space in the back close buddy there we go okay let's jump inside Okay, and a quick look around the inside. And uh, like all modern Mercedes, I've got a lot of good things to say about the interior. Uh, but the first thing I'll say is that it feels very roomy in here. Uh, maybe it's just the lighter materials give it that impression, but yeah, it just seems bigger than a Q5 or, a, or an X3. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice place to be. Uh, and just like the C300 and the other modern Mercedes, you know, they've really lifted their game uh, on the interiors, you know. Uh, this this, alum, uh, this aluminium switch gear they've got going on these days is beautiful, uh, uh, best in class. Just the overall interiors have improved substantially from Mercedes Benz. Uh, that's not to say everything's perfect. You know, I love how they've laid everything out, but I'm just not a big fan of the entertainment system that Mercedes have. Um, it's functional and it's certainly an improvement over the previous generation but compared to the, the its competition, its other German manufacturers competition, I don't think it's as good. It gets the job done but I never find it that uh, intuitive to use. Uh, and of course everybody hates this silly big screen here as well. A screen that is uh, far larger than the actual display it's holding. It just kind of looks out of place. But otherwise the interior is beautiful um, and certainly for the money it is top class. Uh, the, the surfaces are all nice, soft touch feel, uh, everything seems uh, highly engineered. Uh, it's a beautiful place to be. But yeah, um, lots of storage space, little cubby holes everywhere, two cup holders, uh, a decent sized glove box, uh, and, and switch gear that not only looks good but it, it, it's nice to touch as well, you know, you, it's got a, it's got a a decent click to it. Let me jump in the back and see how roomy it is back there. Okay, slide over there William. How are you finding the back seat buddy? Pretty good? Yeah, this is great. Let me correct this. Yeah, this is great back here. There is absolutely plenty of room for someone uh, as big as me. Uh, there's lots of uh, leg room even with the seat quite far back and there's uh, enough uh, headroom as well. Yeah, it's a comfortable rear seat even for uh, the larger male like myself. There's one or two amenities back here as well. You've obviously you got your uh, vents, but hiding away down here is a little socket for 12 volts and uh, an AC outlet so you can charge all your toys. So my final thoughts on the GLC 300. Actually, this is the best bit about a Mercedes. It gives you a little hug. <laughs> See, someone loves me after all, even if it is just a car. Um, yeah, overall, I am very impressed. I'm very impressed with all of the latest um, models. I'm very impressed with all the latest generation models from Mercedes, and this is no exception. You know, I'd be very happy to have this as my daily driver. It's super comfortable, super economical, very well laid out, and the materials are top quality. It competes very strongly with other German cars in this price bracket and size. Yeah, certainly worth considering. I can see why it is currently the most popular Mercedes on the market. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you in the next video.